Secretary Turk, let me, uh, let me give this a try. What's the difference between living in a world with one degree of increased, one degree C of increased temperature and say three degrees C of increased temperature and the difference in the costs that we will um, experience as a nation under those two scenarios? So the orders of magnitude are so much greater if we don't get our act together than if we do what we need to do and we have all those jobs, especially in America, if we lead on the clean energy front. Orders of magnitude difference. Let's talk about those jobs for a moment. The Inflation Reduction Act um, was signed into law about nine months ago. Uh, our friends in the House of Representatives have put forward legislation to repeal that. Uh, that's despite announcements representing at least $150 billion in manufacturing investments in the United States. Um, 46 factories, 18,000 jobs that represents. What would be the impact if we repealed the incentives that are in the Inflation Reduction Act? So I think they'd be catastrophic at this absolutely critical moment, as Chair Murray said at the outset. We are seeing the kind of momentum at reshoring American manufacturing across the board, not just with batteries, not just with solar PV, but across the board, we're seeing that momentum because Congress has led, because the United States government is leading, putting in place those kinds of incentives. You take those away, and those jobs are going to go elsewhere, and we're going to see those opportunities. 2022 was a record year for factory investment in the United States. Are we expecting the same thing in 2023? We're expecting even more. Yeah. We're seeing momentum. Why would we cut back as on the moment we're actually succeeding? Um, to shift gears a little bit, it, there's approximately 30,000 folks who are employed at Sandia and Los Alamos National Laboratories. Both of those labs have cited workforce retention and recruitment as their primary issue uh, in addressing national security missions. We appropriated a number of funds through the National Defense Authorization Act and the appropriation bills to try and address that. Has that had a positive impact and what else can we do to address the the retention issues. So let me uh, turn it over to Administrator Ruby. Secretary I'll just Ruby. say this is a big, big deal for the Secretary, for myself, for all of us. And uh, there's an awful lot of work we need to do on this front. Administrator. Great. Um, thanks, Senator Heinrich. Uh, well, <clears throat> I'm happy to report we've made some changes that are helping. Uh, not, we're not going to take our eye off of it. We can't do our job without those 30,000 people and all the other people in the enterprise. Uh, we uh, may, uh, because of the increases in attrition that we were seeing after COVID, we made it, we did it, we authorized a mid-year salary adjustment at the laboratories, plants and sites. Uh, uh, we uh, lean forward in terms of adding flexibility to benefits uh, that were more consistent with what we, uh, the high tech industry we have to compete with. Uh, we lean forward in terms of a competitive raise package for 23. And as a result of those activities, among other things we're trying to do to improve the work environment and the productivity, uh, the overall attrition is um, close to normal now at both Los Alamos and Sandia and across the complex. We still have pockets where it's quite high, mm -hmm. where it's very competitive. Um, actually, I'm sure the high tech market has helped us. It, there's always a trade off there, but I, but we need to continue to lean forward and we need to provide the very best work environment um, because we have the very best work. Uh, so we can keep people if we can do that. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Secretary Turk, let's go back to the IRA for a minute. Can you walk us through implementation and all the things that DOE is doing now to make that uh, legislation a success? So this is a uh, big, big deal and big piece of legislation, and certainly when you put it together with the bipartisan infrastructure legislation, this is the largest climate and clean energy legislation, not just in the U.S. by orders of magnitude. Uh, it's the biggest legislation ever in the history of humanity. And there's an awful lot we're doing at the Department of Energy. So we have a couple hundred of our folks working with Treasury and IRS to bring our expertise to bear on all of the tax provision uh, piece of it. We also have about $100 billion that you all, that taxpayers have entrusted to us just at the Department of Energy. That's 70 new programs that we're setting up. Many of them are competitive cost share programs like the hydrogen hubs that have gotten so much attention. 
So we have created new offices. We've created a new undersecretary for infrastructure. We've now hired up over 500 people to fill those offices and taken folks from other parts of the department to have that instant capacity. And we're putting out FOAs uh, almost on a daily on a funding opportunity announcements for uh, companies and uh, communities across the country almost on an, a daily, sometimes hourly basis to make sure those opportunities are out there for that real world impact. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Secretary. Ensuring that 